Hey, come on, just because I'm the cinema snob doesn't mean I haven't seen Roadhouse at least a dozen times. Come on, we all know this one, where Patrick Swayze stars as Jack Rudhausen, head bartender at the notorious Two Shits Lounge, and wait, wait, wrong footage, that's clearly Barfly, this is Roadhouse. Okay, here we go from United Artists, the studio behind Rocky, Coming Home, and Annie Hall. Now comes the inspiring story of a cooler named Dalton who uses his wisdom and philosophy to kick your ass if you step out of line. They may as well have sold this as Patrick Swayze, the movie. Released in May of 1989, it was riding high off his success in Dirty Dancing, so much so that one of the taglines is the dancing's over now it gets dirty sweet bar orgy and i love that a movie like roadhouse is directed by a man who sounds like a character in roadhouse rowdy harrington who's done some cool work like one of my favorite james spader movies jack's back plus an underrated one called the stick up and the bruce willis movie striking distance which i dig the hell out of the writers are no surprise either david lee henry has written bronson movies like the evil that men do seagal movies like out for justice and he was a co-writer on 8 Million Ways to Die, which I loved. Hilary Henkin also wrote another Sam Elliott movie of the 80s called Fatal Beauty. And sure, there's a remake coming out soon on Amazon Prime starring Jake Gyllenhaal, but as if I need any excuse to rewatch the original, how 80s is this movie? It begins at the Piano Key Necktie Bar. It may have live music, but be very wary. The lead singer is Tito Lariva. I knew it! This is a bar of vampires! Dalton's got his work cut out for him, especially since he's moonlighting as his role from Tu Wong Fu. You can't fight in those heels! The title over the shaking ass tells me right away what I paid to see. And if you don't know, it's an 80s action movie. Put Kevin Teig in there, looking like he's proud he shut down a community center to build this bar. Did he and Ben Gazzara have a villain off on who gets to play the villain and who gets to play the one you think will be a villain? Dalton is standing where it's the safest, where a cigarette won't set his hair on fire. How did this fight even happen? I blame one too many woodchuck ales. I think it's time for you gentlemen to leave. Who Red Dawn would have ended a lot sooner if Swayze simply asked the Russians and the Cubans to leave. This escalates quick. Did you just stab me? Do we call the police? Hell no! Take this outside, where we will then kindly go back inside. Then they found a homeless man and beat him with their shoes. <laughs> they really should have been arrested. We've even got Michael Kamen doing the music. He scored Die Hard and Lethal Weapon. And you can even hear a little bit of the Die Hard score in here sometimes. It was also right they got Dean Cundy as DP. He shot Escape from New York, The Thing, and Big Trouble in Little China. He knows how to shoot that distinct Swayze slash Kurt Russell hair. Kevin's Frank Tillman comes to offer Swayze a job as head bouncer at the Double Deuce. I've seen you get stabbed multiple times with no injuries. Some people hire mutants to fight crimes. I do to clean up my goddamn bar. Dalton is relatable, though. I've got your plane ticket right here. I don't fly. He's afraid of flying, too, just like me. I am like Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse. You know, I thought you'd be bigger. I get people telling me that all the time, too. And now he's off to Sam Goody to pick up some tapes for the road. Don't know why, but I'm feeling Journey right now. The double deuce doesn't look so bad. Actually, that's what producer Joel Silver said, too. So he had the people on set mess the shit out of it to make it look grungier. I like that this opening all feels like it's taking place on the same night. It hasn't showed daylight in between. The credits were still rolling. 
And the arm wound is all healed, so he's lured to any place with quotable lines. I get off at two, and uh, I just love to get you off about a half an hour after that. When are they gonna get to the famous line, nobody fucks baby in prison? The protection in front of the band isn't the most bulletproof thing in the bar. I think that might go to Denise's hair. Do not mess with Julie Michaels. Don't you know who that is? She helped blow up Jason Voorhees and Jason Goes to Hell. Why do they even need another bouncer? They already have Terry Funk. And whoa, Kathleen Wilhote? Between Tequila and Benetti and now Gilmore Girls, this is covering all of my favorite shows. It's the riveting flashback of Luke's sister. We'll find out who Jess's real father is. Really, Frank has things covered. One alteration with a pen, and someone's sadly gonna be out of a Buick. Sorry, gotta follow the wall rules. I'll tend to this fight later. Gotta catch up with Jeff Healy of the Jeff Healy Band. Yeah, and I thought you'd be bigger. Speaking of Kurt, I thought you'd be bigger is gonna be the I thought you were dead of this movie, isn't it? Must be why he's a legend around here. Hey Hank, you know who that is? Who? Dalton! My god, Timothy Dalton in my bar? He's gonna keep an eye out for unsolicited one-liners. For 20 bucks, you can kiss him! Are you kidding? He'll step in and replace her with a Buick. How does this bar stay open while having to constantly replace all their tables and glassware? The Blues Brothers didn't cause this much damage. All they did was just walk out on the bill. And much like the musicians from Titanic, the band keeps playing. Tragedy strikes, though, when poor Adam Maitland is killed and his ghost lives on in the bar trying to scare the hooligans away. Well, my scouting is done. Hope you all have a nice cleanup. You know, I heard you had balls big enough to come in a dump truck, but uh, you don't look like much to me. Do they all want to bang each other in this? Now to load the car with tires in case he needs to wrap them around some bikers and hilariously roll them down a hill. He's so manly, he rents out the nearest barn for a place to crash. Don't worry, it's also the upstairs of a fire department if need be. Don't mind the helicopters, though. Are action scenes just following him everywhere? That's Ben Gazzara checking out the competition. He'll be too tired to take me down if he's busy wrangling his spooked horses. I swear he does that just to piss me off. Yes, meet Ben's Brad Wesley, introduced like he's one of the pettiest villains of the 80s. I'll screw with you and your horses just because I can. Anyway, now Dalton can address the crew. Morgan, you're out of here. What the fuck are you talking about? You don't have the right temperament for the trade. You would not have taken it well if I named you Mr. Pink. Now let's go over these heist details. No, you idiot, you're a cooler. Say something cool. It's my way or the highway. Don't mess with the bull or you'll get the horns. You're all on double secret probation. Dalton's rules are always to take it outside and to be nice. Sounds good now, but that's the fat clown from Batman Returns. It didn't work out so well when he tried being nice around the penguin. Come on, when do we start kicking ass? I want you to be nice until it's time to not be nice. How are we supposed to know when that is? It'll be when someone sticks a broken chair into the back of your skull. We're off to a good start. He didn't say anything about not inviting the high school girls inside. Also, subtle, I have a 50 in the other hand that he didn't see. What is in these drinks, steroids? A simple, kindly ask the lady not to dance on the table turns into, I'll stick you with my blade, asshole. He even missed the you'll be my regular Saturday night thing line, so he fired him for bad timing. And this guy is, of course, fired for stealing money. Idiots! You hired idiots! Well... It was a good night, nobody died. Do people usually die every night? Sadly, he's staying next door to the after party. Damn it, I knew I shouldn't have built the barn next to Jackie Treehorn's mansion every night with the flipping girls up and down on a bedsheet. Let's take a break. He's got dreams about posing for a bouncer calendar to get to. Question, who's drinking light beer? Hey. Hey. 
Fact. Natural brewing with no artificial ingredients makes it pure beer drinking pleasure. Half the calories, all the taste naturally. And those are the facts of light. We're back in Dalton. Are you here? This barn is a maze, and your neighbor is releasing tigers into the backyard for no reason. She has a look that says, I did have to cut out an ass shot for the review. Oh, sure, but when I light up a cigarette and show my ass to someone bringing me breakfast, I get cow shit thrown at me. Here, have your coffee while I get to my favorite part. One of the best 80s villain moments. A man so in control of this town, he just weaves back and forth on the road just to be a dick. He runs our hero off the road. It's a film of Dalton facing off against the town jerk. Hey, I'm here to pick up a hundred cases of Pepsi. We've decided to turn the deuce into a dry bar. It really is the only way to stop the constant fighting. Oh great, now Wesley is gonna trash the place like he's the adult version of Pete from the Buttercream Gang. Wait, wrong snob reference. I know you, Marshall Teague? Hard-ass grandpa from Last Ounce of Courage? He's always in movies whose genre can be described as straightriotism. This one has plenty of training and badassery, too. Damn, he was hoping it'd be Denise who was watching. He's even distracting Wesley, who's in the middle of his daily tear-up-the-yard-with-tires routine. But I'd say the fired bouncer learned his lesson. He promises to keep his Saturday night things over 18 from now on. Also, he's Wesley's nephew, and Brad Wesley supplies all the booze to the bar. I don't see why they shouldn't rehire him. Oh, really? That's right! Sit down! Stop handing out complimentary knives at the front entrance! This really is a modern set western. It even has characters named after famous real-life cowboys. You wouldn't have to change much to make it a western. Stranger comes to town, sets things right at an outlaw bar. <laughs> Done! Even the Kelly Lynch character is nicknamed Doc, like Doc Holliday. Sure, my rib is sticking through my side, but it's halfway through healing. Earlier, my intestines were hanging out. I shoved them back in. Even when he gets his wounds stapled, the doctor's orders are flex and make it sexy. Woo her with his philosophy. Any particular discipline? No, not really. Um, man's search for faith, that sort of shit. Mm, not even Gandhi could say it better. Doc was originally played by Annette Benning, who was replaced by Kelly Lynch, when she and Swayze had better chemistry. You're supposed to be turned on when looking at someone's stitches, or this line again. You know, for that line of work, I thought you'd be bigger. It's not as cool when the love interest says, I thought you'd be bigger. Anyway, it's Bigfoot season, so now Ben Gazzara's gonna roll over all the mailboxes in town. Why? Because it's Tuesday. Marshall is serious as a heart attack. That's why he's perfecting his look known as the Frank Stallone. Gotta get to the bad guy abusing the henchman scene. This guy had it coming, though. This is for talking me into doing in, Sean. Do you think I needed that after Sidney Sheldon's bloodline? I kind of like this team up, though. It's not every day the henchman takes his accountant for a ride along with him. Hey, hey, stop! We're supposed to get boats, remember? Ooh, someone had to be taught a lesson. They didn't like the dry bar idea. Oh, there's the shop owner. Now they've really had it. That's Red West. You don't go around trashing Elvis's favorite truck stop. Why do you look surprised, Dalton? The place always looks like this. Wesley strong arms money out of all the businesses here, so we just always keep the place trashed so he can't make it look worse. That does it. Get the actual Marlboro Man in here. A man who doesn't need scars to win over the ladies. He's got his voice. The stranger will tell us all the backstory of Jackie Treehorn. Sam Elliott plays Wade Garrett, bouncer mentor, and a Pat Garrett reference. So Dalton calls him up to fill in while he's washing his hair by sticking his head in a supercharged wash. You'll love it at this place, Wade. <laughs> wow, could you be any less subtle? Would you be shocked? If I said, let's go to my place and fuck? The answer, yes, she could be less subtle. 
Jimmy Reno doesn't appreciate this. I think she may be cheating on him. Guess we'll go start some shit in here to mess up Dalton. We gotta stand out among the other fights. Here's a shoe from the Naked Gun. Everyone in this bar senses fighting, so they all join in. Hey, we were friends five minutes ago. Yeah, but I saw people fighting. Maybe it was a mistake to invite Doc to the bar. It would have been a miracle if she showed up and there wasn't fighting going on. I think that's why people show up at the Deuce. If they stop the fighting, they'll lose business. Hey, uh, you want to be my Saturday night thing? You know, order some pizza, binge watch Cheers. It's usually what I do on a Saturday. Or we can go somewhere to smoke. <laughs> Kidding, we can smoke anywhere. It's Swayze, so of course he's likable as hell. I keep talking, you're gonna go off thinking I'm a nice guy. I know you're not a nice guy. But when I'm not nice, people love me even more. I like how they keep messing up his car, as if the dude's car from The Big Lebowski is also in this movie. Guess I'll take my new stop sign and leave. It's got a note that says, tomorrow, it's a dead end. Jokes on the villains, they made his windshield much more cushiony to lay on. But now we finally get to see Mr. Wesley's place. Nice breakfast. Um, I think I'm supposed to show you my ass now? Wesley's got to give his I'm powerful speech. See these eggs? They'll even make them scrambled if I want. And I can pick any hot sauce to put on it. So now Wesley wants to hire him to clean up his own bar. Sure, he declines. But really, is he any less sinister than Frank at the beginning? At least Ben's got a side of toast. But it's after Jeff Healy singing a cover to Roadhouse Blues that I'm like, I think this movie might be selling a soundtrack. And did the cinematographer come with cameos from his other movies? Ernie, what's the story? Whiskey's running low. Childs, what are you doing here? Time for another break. They can shoot a Keith David movie in there for a while. We're an hour in, and Dalton's gotta get so laid. Put a collar on man's real best friend, Budweiser. <laughs> right, pal? Budweiser is the king of beer. Budweiser, but you know that. Welcome back, people. Your upstairs barn is outstanding. No, seriously, the top of this barn is better than every single apartment in the town. Swayze has been perfecting his moves for years. What does he do? He puts on These Arms Are Mine by Otis Redding, which was also on the Dirty Dancing soundtrack. Their chemistry is quite good. It was the time for Kelly Lynch bar movies. She was also in 1988's Cocktail. Oh, right! That was the movie earlier. Remake that, Amazon. I dare you. Like Swayze, she's also got a butt shot in the movie, so I'll cover that up again by showing this reaction as well. Wesley, however, is of course watching them like a creep. What? He would be watching some bikini movies on Cinemax, but they keep showing Roadhouse instead. He is the jealous type, because Cody tells him that Brad Wesley also had a thing for Doc. None of this will matter in the end, because once Sam Elliott rolls into town, every single person will fall in love with his charm. Watch this. You got a skinny little runt named Dalton working here. Uh, marry me, please. And what do you guys think is going to happen trying to take the deuce's beer away? You're not going to win this fight. You all look like Brad Wesley sent a bowling team that he sponsors. The only reason he's kind of getting his ass kicked is just to be nice so he can give Wade a fight scene. Wade looks like he kicked someone's ass at Woodstock for putting a flower in his best girl's hair. Sam Elliott is so good and cool in this that he's one of the most popular things about it, and he doesn't fully come into play till about 70 minutes in. Hell, I'm like, is Dalton still in this? Is it a love story with Wade and Doc now? <sighs> I'm not even gonna try to step in. Uh, you win again, Wade. This is the part where I tell you I want you for myself. <laughs> anyway, I think they just slept together. Even when she leaves, he can still throw a line. That gal's got entirely too many brains to have an ass like that. I think it says that on her medical degree. This is a serious moment, though, where we find out about Dalton's tortured past where he killed a man in self-defense. 
After that rumor earlier about Dalton ripping a man's throat out, I think we know how this will end. The villains will probably get themselves killed, like how they don't retaliate by setting the deuce on fire. <laughs> no, no, they set the local shop on fire. <laughs> no, now where will I get my morning coffee, newspaper, and Pop-Tarts? You son of a bitch. First you run Wawa out of town, and now this? We'll get to the standoff in a minute. We've got more soundtrack to sell, and okay, fine. I'll allow it that Denise's sexy dance is important to the plot. That winds Jimmy up enough to get all good and pissed off. <laughs> Will people please finish their beer first before breaking the bottle? Okay, this one-man show is impressive and all, but not nearly as sexy as Denise's. Why are you allowing this to happen? Why are you sending this poor guy in? You know Marshall Teague will defeat him? The Penguin defeated him! Great, look what you did. The whole bar's erupted into a fight. Again! Hell, so much of the punches in the movie are real. Sam Elliott would later say, Yeah, we all got our ass kicked on this film. Everywhere you look, there's probably bruises and broken ribs. Swayze already had problems with his knee beforehand, but due to some injuries this movie did, he wanted to keep it relatively tame on his next film, so he turned down more physical roles in Tango and Cash and Predator 2 to instead do one of the biggest hits of his career, Ghost. But back to this one, I like that it now becomes an arson case. If you're wondering why no one else can step in to avenge the shop owner, all you have to do is say the phrase, has everyone in their pocket, when describing the villain. Hell, his assholery continues when he destroys the local Ford Motor Company. I don't know, some folks in this town seem to love Wesley's petty dickishness. They're all cheering when he destroys the business. Eh? Uh, eh? Uh, then tomorrow I'll set rats loose in the shopping mall. What the hell is wrong with you, Brad? She said that like she caught him simply letting air out of some tires. That's nothing that a simple training montage can't fix. And some rock hard wisdom from his mentor. <laughs> Maybe I ought to kick your ass. Uh, we don't want to do this. Shut up and kiss me, you fool! What are you doing? There's no time for a third act breakup. Think of all the pranks Brad Wesley is planning as we speak. Well, who's gonna save her from you? Oh my god, no! The Hardys! We'll be right back. Let him kick the shit out of that fire. On Decker, the most expensive taste in beer. If you haven't tried it yet, you will. We're back and he blew up the farmer's house? What? What threat to you was that guy? Actually, it was because I was tired of staring into his windows while he was having alone time with his playboys. Who on earth could have done such a thing? <laughs> Ass-cackling Jimmy, he'll know who did it! Or just get to the famous kickboxing scene, show off these moves, as the cast was trained by kickboxing legend Benny the Jetter Kedes, who you might have seen in such movies as Force 5 and Gross Point Blank as well. Don't kick his ass too hard now, he's got to get to the craziest line in the film. I used to fuck guys like you in prison. <laughs> in the remake, it'll be make love to guys like you in prison. This is a lot of fighting, leg breaking, guns drawn, and throats ripped out all over a jerk businessman with unfair liquor deals. And it's still funny that they just live across the lake from each other. Yeah, you mind keeping it down? I've actually learned my lesson. No more flyovers with the helicopter. This guy calls him to flip a coin as to whether he'll kill Wade or the bar. Even over the phone, he's keeping the coin flipping honest. I wonder who he'll choose. Don't worry about me. I hooked up with Denise last night. Ooh, that's a rowdy one. She did things to my pecker that would make even a vacuum cleaner blush. 
everyone's in trouble, he's also got to protect Doc, too. Hey, wait, I have to tell this man he has bone disease. There's no time! While it may look like they killed Wade and that it was Tails, I'm still blaming Denise on this. She's so good in the sack, she's the basic instinct of this town. On the plus side, I guess another store opened up across the street. There's ten minutes remaining. We got a lot of 80s action staples left to do. You think you're up for it? <laughs> yep, it's true. The movie's kind of awesome. I'd say it's a success. Regarded as kind of a camp 80s action classic today, it underperformed at the box office, but just looking at one frame of it, and you can tell, yeah, this was bound to be rented like crazy on a Friday night and shown repeatedly on cable. Even Ben Gazzara said that of all of his movies, this is the one he saw on TV the most. So cable and video made it a success, but critics weren't big on it, though even some negative reviews called it entertaining. A lot, though, were divided on whether it was bad or entertainingly bad. I don't even know if it's bad, really. It achieved its goal, which is for it to be a cheesy action film about a bouncer who takes on a corrupt businessman. It gives you your money's worth with a hero who will kick the bullets away. <laughs> Oh, tails again. It wasn't me who did that. I don't know the context of that line. These scenes all top each other. Look what he does to this man who seemingly thinks a dead bear is attacking him. I mean, you could have just moved, but it'd be less funny. The film's also quotable as hell, with famous lines that are still referenced to this day, and it's fun and well-made enough that you could enjoy it on your own, or as a great party movie, too. It makes sense it was the first film to be riff tracked but if stabbing him in the arm earlier made him mad, shooting him in the arm will make him madder. Truly, this is how Brad Wesley wants to go out. <laughs> with die-hard music cues. Oh, and shot by the whole town, all coming together to get rid of the town's Dennis the Menace. It's like they all read Murder on the Orient Express and thought, oh, we got an idea of how to get rid of Wesley. Why didn't we do this sooner? Best leave one final line that sums the whole thing up. A polar bear fell on me. Yep. Polar bear fell on me. Cue up the music. No chance we can top that. That's enough to set up for a sequel, right? Well, sorta. In 2006, there was a direct-to-video Roadhouse 2 about Dalton's son. And after years of trying to get a remake off the ground, we'll see if it was all worth it when the new one comes out March of this year. Now I'm off to do my Saturday night thing, teaching the child all the wise sayings he'll need to know in the future. You can't look any further than Roadhouse! Does a hobby horse have a wooden dick?